Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, community investments in the arts. What's it worth? Now, I'm going to be honest with you right up front. This is really not something that I can decide for you as an individual. And I certainly can't decide it for the community in which you live. But I can tell you what my belief is and what I think it's worth as a community investment. And we're going to look at four areas. Investment in the arts as an educational tool, as a vehicle to build community, as an economic driver, <clears throat> and finally, investment in the arts for public health purposes. So let's start with education. Now, th this is a tough issue. I mean, there's so many angles to it, and there's so much dialogue about it, and it's been politicized in so many ways. But I think when you talk about investments in the arts as an educational tool, I think in today's world, you can really boil it down to one principle. And that's this. Every single issue we face, whether it's a small town or it's a city, a region, a state, a nation, a global community, every single issue we face in this, whether it's dealing with the environment or healthcare or global politics, in this increasingly fast-paced, interconnected, chaotic world in which we live, is going to become more complex, more complicated. And in order to effectively address these increasingly complex issues and challenges, we have to develop in our populace a corresponding increase in creativity, the ability to think at a higher level, the ability to think outside the box. And the most effective tool in our educational and community arsenal to teach creativity, to teach thinking out of the box, is music and the arts. So what's that worth to a community? The second issue, again, in this increasingly fast-paced, chaotic world, in a lot of ways, we're becoming less connected. I mean, everybody's got their iPhones, they've got their iPads, or texting. You don't meet face-to-face -face as much as you used to, it seems. And in such a world, it's increasingly important that communities invest in things that bring people together, that build community. Now, it could be a lot of things. It could be, for example, you know, something like this, a, a music concert that brings a lot of people together. Okay? But it could also be something like this. This is an arts initiative, uh, Music for Everyone created. It's called Keys for the City, and it's in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And each summer since 2010, Music for Everyone's been putting out anywhere between 12 and 20 fully designed pianos throughout the streets of Lancaster. And those pianos are available 24-7 for anybody and everybody to play whenever they want for more than four months, from mid-May through the end of September. Now, when we announced that we were going to do this the first year in 2010, we, were, we announced we were going to put out 20 pianos. Four months, 24-7 access. And people thought we were absolutely crazy. They said, man, those pianos, they won't last a week before they're all vandalized. But you know, we had a different idea. We had a different narrative. We had a different belief. See, what we believed, we believed in people's better angels. We believed that the people of Lancaster were good people, civic-minded people, caring people, thoughtful people, people who appreciated the arts. And we believed that not only would they enjoy those pianos all summer, but they would take care of them. So fast forward four months, and now keep in mind, 20 pianos spread throughout downtown Lancaster, 24-7 access, to the entire community for more than four months, one incident of vandalism. One incident of vandalism. Now, the narrative at that point was, whoa, what an incredible community we live in. What a tremendous place. What great people we have in this community. Civic-minded, caring people, thoughtful people, people who appreciate the arts. 
Those people enjoyed those pianos, but not only did they do that, they took care of them. And it, as a result, it really brought the community together. It became a source of pride for the community. And so, you know, every summer when we put these out, I mean, you know, we, we put them out last week. We got 14 pianos on the streets of Lancaster, going to be there till the end of September, available for anybody to play 24-7. You all come down. Lancaster's the street, street piano capital of the world, right? But literally every summer there are tens of thousands of magical musical moments that occur around those pianos. People of different ages, races, beliefs of all kinds coming together and sharing a magical musical moment. I mean, even if you're walking downtown and you're a block away from a piano and you hear somebody over there sort of messing around on one, you know, that, that links you to that person. That links you to that person and it links you to the city. And you say, man, I'm a part of this city. What a great city we have. What a great community we have to be able to do something like this. So the power of music and the arts to bring people together is extraordinary. Okay? What's that worth? Next is uh, the arts, community investment in the arts as an economic driver. Now, there are a couple ways to look at this. Like, usually most cities and regions, at some point or another, they'll conduct an economic study of the art's impact on the economy. And Lancaster did this a few years ago, and the, the end result was that the, the arts had a direct impact on the uh, Lancaster's economy to the tune of about 70, $72 million a year. Okay? somewhere around 1,100 or so jobs that are directly related to the arts industry, okay? And that's certainly one way to look at it. But there's another way to look at it, okay? America started as an agrarian society, agricultural society and economy. And then in the early 1800s, mid-1800s, we sort of started shifting to an industrial economy. And there are a lot of people now who are saying that what we live in now is really a creative economy. And the people who are driving that creative economy, a guy by the name of Richard Florida coined the term the creative class, is driving the creative economy. And the creative class are people who use technology and innovation and, and creative ways to add value to a company or add value to the economy or add value to the community. They're the movers and shakers. They're the people who are going to be really make a difference. This creative class. So the question becomes, now when you couple that with a lot of changes in our society for transportation and technology, well let me just let me give you an example. If I lived here in Westchester, and I loved living in Westchester. And I worked for a company here in Westchester, okay? And that company loved me. I added a lot of value. I was making a difference in that, in that company. And I loved that company too. Well, you know, 25 years ago, if that company decided to pick up and move from Westchester and go down to Florida, chances are I would have had to pick up and move with them. But today, Today, with transportation the way it is, with technology the way it is, with networking the way it is, companies are more willing to identify those movers and shakers, your creative class of people that add a lot of value to their company, and they're more willing to say, wait a second, you know what? We really like you. And I know you like living in Westchester. So let's work something out. We can work something out because you're a value. You add a lot of value to our company. And again, these are the same people who add an awful lot of value to every community. So it begs the question, it begs the question, what do you have to do as a community to attract those kinds of people, the creative class, the movers and shakers who are going to make an impact in your community? What do you have to do to attract them? Because they have more choices than ever now to live and work and raise their families wherever they want, much more flexibility. 
So what do you have to do as a community to attract those people, to make them say, you know what, I want to stay right here in Westchester, and I want to raise my family here, and work here, and live here. And you know what it is? Stuff like the lively downtown scene, lots of galleries, music places, restaurants, community art fairs, a good education system, an education system that invests in the arts. Because the bottom line is, when you boil it all down, creative people want to live next to and work alongside other creative people. Creative people want to live in a community that values creativity. So what's that worth to a community? Last item, investment in the arts for, for public health purposes. I'll tell you what, this is a really interesting and fascinating area, and it's one that's just going to continue to grow. You know, it seems like every week there's another study released or another story about the medical profession, how they are incorporating the arts into the healing process. For example, music's used to, to treat dep depression. Music's used as a way to manage pain. And you're going to see nothing but more and more research about that, that effect of the arts on the healing process. But there's more to it than that. Baby boom generation, man, we're getting up there. We're getting up there, and our percentage of seniors is going to rise. And in such an uh, environment, it's going to become increasingly important to have a better health care for seniors. And one of the tremendous powers of music and the arts is that you can be involved and engaged in music and the arts until you're 110 years old. A more engaged senior population means a, means a more active population, okay? uh, a, 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 more, a, a, a livelier, uh, more energetic, in, in, in a, a more you know, sharper, Invi staying engaged in the arts does all of those things. In other words, the end result is a healthier senior population. Seems to work for these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they all look like they're 110. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I think they're in the mid-70s. Charlie Watts is 73, I know the drummer, but it seems to be working for them. So at any rate, what's that worth as a community? Investment in the arts as a, as a uh, public health uh, to improve public health. So, so there you have it. What's that all worth? Investment in the arts as, a, as an educational tool, as a way to build and bring together communities, as an economic driver, and finally for reasons of public health. What's that all worth to a community? Now again, I can't decide that for you individually, nor can I decide that for you for the community in which you live. But this is what I can tell you. If you believe this, if you believe this, and if you're passionate about it, as an individual citizen, I know at a minimum you have the right, if not the responsibility, to advocate for it, to raise the issue, to nudge your neighbors and say, hey, you ever think about this? To put a bug in the ear of your community leaders, your education leaders about this. But you know what? That's not enough. What's so exciting about the world we live in today is that if you have an idea, and this is what I want to leave you with tonight, if you have an idea, a passion, an idea germinates out of that, the ability to take that and do something with that and bring it over here to a point, develop it, where it has a real community impact has never been greater. Let me give you an example. If I wanted to start music for everyone, 20 years ago, chances are I would have had to work through a community arts organization, big community arts organization, maybe the city, maybe a big foundation, to have the heft and the contacts and the resources to take my idea and passion and, and bring it to a point where it impacts community. Problem with that with big organizations, a lot of bureaucracy. In today's fast-paced world, any organization of any size needs to be nimble to be able to respond to uh, changing needs in the community. Okay? Because today, the, 
the, the distance between passion and idea and community impact has never been shorter. The barriers between idea and community impact, having a real impact, have never been lower. I mean, you gotta do is start a website, you're a business. So that's what I wanna leave you with tonight. If you have a passion, if you have an idea that can impact your community, the opportunities to do so have never been greater. And you know what? You don't have to change the world. You don't have to change the world, but you know what? You can have an impact in your block or your neighborhood or your town or your state. The opportunity to do that, to take idea, passion, and have a real community impact has never been greater. And you know what? You start that website, you start that with a little small fundraiser, and you never know where it can take you. And I do know one thing for sure. You do that, you go out, you've got to have that community impact. I know for sure that that will be worth an awful lot. Thank you so much. <laughs>